we have been looking at uh, the modified equation just remind you the modified equation is the actual equation that we think we are solving when we get our approximate solution to the original equation. In employing the modified equation we have defined consistency right and uh, well auxiliary on the side I defined what is convergence. We also saw that the modified equation to our original wave equation, the original wave equation The original wave equation, the way we were looking at it had a 0 right hand side, right? but the modified equation ended up having terms that were of the form instead of being 0 had some coefficient second derivative of x and we had things with third derivative of x and so on. We wrote it up to and including the fourth derivative. Right. So, we then ask the question just take one such term, the equations are linear, why, why do not I deliberately add, why do not I deliberately add right a term on the left hand side on the right hand side which has rho squared u dou x squared, mu 2 is a constant. Okay and very suggestively I have called it mu 2, clearly I am going to have a mu 3 and a mu 4, fine. Okay. Now for this equation, I am just repeating what we did at the end of the class, we said that a, a solution could be written in terms of Fourier series right and I will write one term, it is still a solution. So that u could be written as a n exponent i n I think I decided to get rid of the 2 pi and L right x minus a t. This was for the original equation, we decided to go the semi inverse route which means that we are going to try out come up with a candidate solution, we will guess that the solution to this equation is in this form and that gives us one disposable constant B that we need to determine fine, all the others are fixed. Now since I know I am going to add extra derivatives, let me just write out all the derivatives that I require. Okay. So do u do t right and then we can just substitute, we can keep track of this and substitute whatever we want. Do u do t is uh, what do we get, so if you differentiate this right, if you differentiate this or we will use product rule, so you will get the sum of two terms whichever way you want to do it, so you will get a u times i n a that comes from differentiating the first one with a minus sign because it is a minus a t plus b, is that fine, what is do you do x, u times, this is u times, I will put a star, u, u multiplied by u times, it is not u of maybe I will use a square bracket, u of u times i n that is it, that is it. What does dou squared u dou x squared? So you will get another i n, every differentiation with respect to x you will get an i n, so that will become a minus n squared u dou cubed u dou x cubed gives me an i n times that minus i n cubed u and finally dou to the fourth u dou x to the fourth is n to the fourth times u, is that fine, everybody is with me. Now you can just work it out, so we will work it out first for this equation, it has uh, only a second derivative term. So clearly all of them have u as a coefficient that will go away. So if I substitute the first term is going to give me a minus i n a plus b and the dou u dou x has an a multiplying it. So that will give me a plus 
a i n which is the whole point which is why our original equation was satisfied equals mu 2 times minus n squared minus mu 2 times n squared fine that is b. So this tells me that for this equation for the equation that we have for this equation this tells me that the b here should be minus mu 2 times n okay fine. So what does that mean what is that what 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 is the implication of that u I will just write it out as a n exponent I will just write it out again i n x minus a t e power minus mu 2 n squared t. So what does this tell us about u? The added terms. See if this were not there it is just a bunch of sines and cosines right the amplitude depending on the n sin x sin 2 x sin 3 x depending on the n and the amplitude is a n and the a n does not change okay it does not change with time the n does not change with time it only changes with wave number but it does not change with time whereas what is happened now is because it is being multiplied by this mu 2 n square t the solution is going to decay okay I prefer the word decay in literature very often we call it a, a dissipative term so it is called a dissipative term or dissipation. The scheme is said to be dissipative. So the solution decays. The solution decays. Is that fine? The addition of the second derivative term, the solution decays given that when does it decay? Mu2 has to be positive, mu2 has to be greater than 0. So you get this decay if mu2 is greater than mu2 is greater than 0. Is that fine? So far it looks okay. But there is something else that is interesting it does not just decay there is an n square term here okay. So it basically says that higher frequencies decay faster than lower frequencies okay. So higher frequencies will decay faster than lower frequencies if mu2 is uh, negative if mu2 is negative the exponent here is positive the solution will diverge fine is that okay. So what we are saying is see remember I have added this, this term to the right hand side because such a term appeared in my modified equation and what is the modified equation the modified equation is the equation to which my approximate solution the solution that my program is generating the solution that my program is generating is a solution to the modified equation. So the modified equation has this extra term has the second derivative term the modified equation has a second derivative term and the mu2 is negative my scheme is going to diverge is that fine and mu2 is positive my scheme will converge right my scheme will be stable fine my scheme will be stable we have the added we have the added information about what our what our algorithm or the solver does. I want you to understand by writing out this equation we are saying something about how our program is actually going to behave. You understand that we can look at the modified equation and make an observation that is what we are trying to do. This basically says that the program that you write using a scheme which has the second derivative term will cause the high frequencies to decay faster than low frequencies given that mu2 is positive right and if mu2 is negative high frequencies will diverge faster than low frequencies fine okay right. So we this is this is the property that we are able to get. So what happens if we have a third derivative now let us consider the situation where you have dou u dou t plus a dou u dou x equals and we add a mu 3 dou cubed u dou x cubed okay and in this case b happens to be from the third derivative b is minus i n cubed 
mu 3 is that fine everyone. So, the u for this equation is a n exponent i n x minus well the b also is going to have a an i n in it either we can take it in one step or maybe we will do it in two, two steps let, let me not let me not hurry through it a t exponent e power minus i n cubed mu 3 t okay and we can in fact combine these terms. So, this gives me a n exponent i n x minus a plus mu 3 n squared t is that okay okay. So, what was the coefficient that was multiplying the t the coefficient that was multiplying is the physical speed with which right it was the, it was the speed with which our equation was propagating the signal you understand whatever whatever you are modeling whether it was u or whatever it is that was that you are modeling this was the speed with which it was being propagated that speed has now changed okay that speed has so the addition of the third derivative term the we have a purely complex term here it is not going to decay there is no real component it is not going to decay it is going to keep on oscillating it is going to keep on oscillating added to it it turns out that our mu 3 term actually adds actually adds to the speed of propagation there is worse what does it add right what does it add so of course uh, i'll say i'm saying added because i must i'm i'm in my mind saying mu 3 is greater than 0 it adds if mu 3 is greater than 0 it adds if mu 3 is less, less than 0 it subtracts right so it adds to the speed propagation speed and mu 3 less than 0 it will subtract okay subtracts but there is worse the speed that it adds depends on the frequency right so in this case in this case if mu 3 is greater than 0 high frequencies will travel faster than low frequencies am i making sense high frequencies will travel faster than low frequencies that is basically what it says not only are not only are not only is the is the function that we are monitoring not only is it propagating at the wrong speed right but if you decompose it using fourier series into its component frequencies right the high frequency will travel faster than low frequency am i making sense this is called dispersion dispersion right in a technical context most probably the first time you encountered dispersion was possibly when you were looking at Newton's experiment with optics right that is most probably the first time where you saw dispersion of light and light passed through a prism at an angle right dispersion the fact that different wave numbers are traveling at different speeds causes for it, it may enables you to see that white light is may actually has a spectrum associated with it okay. So, that is dispersion that is most probably the first time you most probably encountered it is when you are sharing a bag of potato chips or something of that sort where you know that if you take a standard bag of potato chips right the larger wave numbers the more interesting wave number no I should say the smaller wave numbers the larger wavelengths the more interesting wavelengths tend to be on the top and the fine dust tends to be in the bottom. So, the person who grabs the bag first gets the biggest pieces right and invariably so any container if you look at it you will see that the dust tends to settle the you know if you have aggregate material you will see that it gets there is a process of dispersion as you disturb it where the higher frequencies end up 
at the bottom and the lower frequencies end up at the top. The larger pieces end up at the top and the finer dust ends up at the bottom and you get a distribution. So it is always what you know intuitively that you should grab the potato chip bag right in the front is a fact because simply purely because of purely because of dispersion right that high frequencies in this case there is a separation that takes place right you would like them to be you would like the signal to be in a certain form but there is a separation that takes place. What does that mean? Well if you had what that basically means is that if you have an initial condition which is like a step and you do a Fourier series expansion for this we will ignore ideas of Gibbs phenomenon and all of that right. You do a Fourier series expansion for it that as it propagates in time right that we expect not to get a step but to get something that is that is wavy. Simply because the way you do Fourier series all of the coefficients all the wave numbers they combine together in such a fashion as to wherever there is a peak which you do not want it is cancelled by a higher frequency you understand. And if they are travelling at different speeds what gave you a sharp step in the beginning as it propagates because the different frequencies are travelling at different rates they would not quite add up exactly. Okay, am I making sense? They won't quite add up. So there is a, in a sense, if you if you look at the one that's propagating at the right speed, there's a phase error that is introduced into the system. Some of them are not in the right at the right in the right phase. They are not all adding up together, right? Properly, there's a phase error that you're accumulating. That's basically what happens. So that's dispersion. What about fourth derivative? Do you do t? A do you do x? mu fourth do x to the fourth we do not have to go through the whole process right b equals mu four n power four so this is just like the second derivative there is a difference though so u is a n exponent i n x minus a t e power minus plus plus mu 4 n power 4 times t. So for stability we require you will have stability if mu 4 is less than 0 mu 4 has to be less than 0 for stability for decay. If it is not less than 0 it is going to it is going to diverge it is going to diverge. I want to emphasize what we are doing here though we seem to be looking at these equations individually with these terms thrown in looking at this behavior you can look at your modified equation and then determine what is the behavior of your program that is the idea okay okay that is the idea. This has an n power 4. This is this is a lot worse. This has an n power four. Am I making sense? I mean, you can just look at if you consider wave number, wave number two versus wave number one. Two power four is sixteen. Right? If you if you look at if you look at wave number one versus wave number ten. Now you are talking about exponential raised to the power ten. So this is really high frequencies are just completely being eliminated extremely rapidly. But again we have the same story that high frequencies decay faster than low frequencies but because we have an n power 4 involved here right and the decay occurs when I keep doing this exponent when mu 4 is less than 0 right if mu 4 is greater than 0 it is going to cause a divergence fine and high frequencies will then diverge faster than low frequencies right. So this seems to tell us that maybe we have to be a little worried about, worried about the high frequency content. Is that fine? Is that okay? Right. What about the modified equation? Do you remember the modified equation? You remember the well, you may not remember it. 
just to recollect remember that I said that in order to in the modified equation you have time derivative terms right and to eliminate the time derivative terms you should really use the modified equation itself to eliminate the time derivative term okay and all the mixed derivatives that come because of that fine right what I did in class last time I just basically use the governing equation there is a reason why I did that right because we need that equation also though it is not really the true modified equation we need that equation also. Uh, what I will do now is I am not going to do FTBS originally I thought maybe I would do FTBS I am not going to do FTBS I will save a little time I got myself a, a cheat sheet for my book which I have got a little table right of all the terms second derivative so we have seen second derivative third derivative fourth derivative what do you expect to be the nature of the fifth derivative term if there is one you expect it to be dispersive right so the for the linear wave equation for the linear wave equation right if you add to the right hand side if there is somehow you add to the right hand side even derivative terms the sign may change but it is likely to be dk if you pick the right coefficient right and if you add odd derivative terms it is not going to dk but it is likely to be dispersive whether high frequencies travel faster or travel slower will depend on the coefficient that that term has okay that has to be determined right so just looking at second third fourth we can sort of guess because we can see that you get i squared i cubed i to the fourth and so on so it is very clear that it is going to become real imaginary real imaginary and the sign will keep flipping okay so that is very clear that process is obvious okay as to what is going to happen let me just write out this let me just write out this table for you so what I am going to do is I am going to write uh, forward time central space forward time forward space forward time backward space and this will look different from what I did last time because in this case I am actually using the modified equation to eliminate the time derivative term is that clear okay so this is the, the coefficients that I get for FTCS will look different fine I will show you when I do a demo I will show you uh, an easy way by which you can calculate this otherwise it is quite it is a pain I mean you, you have to do it I have done all of these manually because even though I have done them using a symbolic manipulator I did not trust the symbolic manipulator I actually did it manually right. So but uh, what I will do now is I will have here let me first write mu2 so this is the mu2 term for FTCS so you get a minus a delta x by 2 times sigma fine what is sigma a delta t by delta x so where possible I will write it in terms of sigma because sigma is something that seems to be significant for us it showed up in all our stability conditions and so on so I am going to write it in terms of sigma where it is possible. So then uh, FTFS mu2 happens to be minus a delta x by 2 so that is the same for all of them 1 plus sigma and FTBS is a delta x by 2 1 minus sigma you understand so right right here you can see this is negative right unless unless uh, something happens to say this is this is negative this is negative that is could be positive right that could be positive which is what we got 0 less than sigma less than 1 we got a stability condition it is not it is possible you may not always get the stability condition out of the modified equation or you may not always get the perfect stability condition out of the modified equation but in this case it actually worked okay so it really shows that uh, whether if mu2 is negative you get unstable situation if mu2 is positive you get decay right and this and this and this and the solution or the algorithm is stable is that fine okay right so what we did with the stability condition we actually got here what about uh, mu3 mu3 is a bit of a mess 
So that is going to be minus a delta x squared by 3 factorial 1 plus sigma 1 plus 2 sigma squared. Fine and a minus a delta x squared by 3 factorial I could have most probably saved a little space by keeping all the constant these a, a delta x squared those are those tend to be the same 1 plus sigma into 1 plus 2 sigma plus 1 or 1 plus 2 sigma and the last one is minus a delta x cubed I am sorry delta x squared by 3 factorial 1 minus sigma into 2 sigma minus 1. I am writing it a little big if you do not mind. I will write the third column here. So that is mu 4. So you get a minus a sigma delta x cubed by 12 2 plus 3 sigma squared okay. So do not see first thing just do not take this down and you are happy with it you should try to check at least a few of them there are enough of you that you can take you know bits and pieces and check it out. The other thing is you should at least do the using the wave equation instead of the modified equation to eliminate the time derivatives to see what is the difference between what I have given you and what you would get there okay and you will get a little practice actually actually doing the modified equation which is a good idea for you to do okay. So then you have a minus a delta x cube by 4 factorial 1 plus sigma 6 sigma squared 6 sigma squared plus 6 sigma plus 1 and FTBS right our star performer amongst the three of these right is A delta x cubed by 4 factorial 1 minus sigma 6 sigma squared minus 6 sigma plus 1. Okay, that is the full table is that fine everyone. So you look at this, this basically says that for all of them, for all of them you have dispersion, for all of them you have dispersion fine and depending on what happens, so depending on what values that you take the sign can actually change, it is possible for the sign to change right in some cases not. In some cases right and in, in this case what happens you have to see whether it what whether it something travel whether it is high frequencies travel faster so you, I will allow you to work through this to see what happens okay. So you have FTFS, FTBS all of them are can be dispersive can be dispersive and you have mu4 these two have negative quantities so you say wait a minute if it is negative they should be stable. Right, but apparently it is not enough to it is not enough to stabilize apparently it is not enough to stabilize okay and that is likely because of the n power 4 which is more stabilized than the wave numbers close to 1 okay and what do we have here finally here we have positive it is supposed to be destabilizing it is supposed to be destabilizing but apparently it is not dominant enough to actually create problem for us okay right. So we have got the second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative looking at this I would suspect that maybe the higher derivatives are not really that important okay as a first order as conclusion that I come to right. If you were to try it out see we have not actually run programs yet right but if FTD, FTBS actually does deliver right we can, we can conclude that the higher, higher derivatives maybe are not that important right now. We may find use for them later right, right now it looks like they are not that important. Any other observations that we can make? If you set sigma equals 1 for FTBS, if you set sigma equals 1 for FTBS it looks like 
all the terms in the modified equation have a 1 minus sigma if you set if you set sigma equals 1 and it turns out by the way it is a fact if you write out the term the general terms in the modified equation all of the terms will have a 1 minus sigma so in the case of ftbs if you set sigma equals 1 your approximate solution is a solution to the exact equation the original governing equation okay that is nice but remember what does that mean see we, you cannot just say oh I am solving the original equation we are solving the original equation but our function is still represented only using 11 grid points or 100 grid points or 1000 grid points we still have a computer representation of the function that function is being propagated at the right speed our approximate function is being propagated at the correct speed our approximate function is being propagated the way it is supposed to be propagated by FTBS by the I am sorry by the wave equation that is all it means if sigma equals 1 the modified equation for FTBS becomes identical identical to the original equation okay so our approximate so approximate solution actually satisfies that equation it is just that it is an approximate solution still am I making sense okay because it is a representation using a finite number of points if if it were if you were to if you were try to if you were to try to represent that step function that I talked about earlier using a finite set of points what you would actually get would be a ramp what you would actually get would be a ramp there will be a value here and the next value will drop and somewhere in between there is a step what you will actually get this is about the best that you can do if you are going to be using linear interpolants if you are going to use hat functions this is the best that you can do so the actual representation will be a ramp all that says is if your initial condition was a ramp everything is fine if your initial condition is a step then there is an approximation in the representation of that step is that okay everyone right so what we have seen is that we have this we have we have the modified equation we have I have written it in a strange fashion but we have the modified equation for all three of these you can try out uh, modified equation what have we left out BTCS right and as I said you can use the wave equation itself and a little exercise just try it out make sure that you are able to do it get the modified equation for the rest fine are there any questions questions everything is fine okay so then what do we have now uh, I will go to this board here what do we have now so the question is we have seen we have seen that uh, because of mu 4 we have seen that because of this because of FTCS having this term in the front up front right because FTCS has this term up front that the coefficient being negative that is the reason why it is not working right that is the conclusion we draw from this analysis and in this case for sigma between 0 and 1 this coefficient being positive that is the reason why this thing is working okay so it seems to be a case for upwinding that is one thing there is another thing we can ask the question well what actually is the difference between the two after all all you are doing is in the forward time central space part you are you have a up plus 1 at time level q minus a up minus 1 at time level q divided by 2 delta x right I have, I have left out the time level q fine right and in the case of FTBS what you have is a up time level q minus a up minus 1 time level q divided by delta x really between the two schemes that is the only difference between the two schemes that is the only difference and the modified equation changes in the sense that a second derivative term the sign of a second derivative term changes so what happens if you subtract one from the other what is the difference between the two let me ask the question that way what is the difference between the two right so the LCM is 2 delta x that is easy u p plus 1 minus u p minus 1 
minus 2 u p plus 2 u p minus 1. And this gives me u p plus 1 minus 2 u p plus u p minus 1 divided by 2 delta x. I can multiply and divide by delta x, right. If I multiply and divide by delta x, this gives me a delta x, I take the 2 back here, delta x square. That looks familiar. That is the second derivative, right. So this sort of brings a little closure here. So the difference between the modified equations and the difference between what we are doing here, between central differences and forward. So if you are doing and backward differences, if you are doing upwinding, what you are effectively doing is you have taken central differences and added some kind of dissipation, okay. You have taken central differences and you have added some kind of dissipation. This is the exact amount of dissipation that you have added, which caused a change to your modified equation. Is that fine, right? So there is a, a school of thought that basically says why not add the dissipation ourselves? There are two ways, two ways, two ways that you can pose it. So basically, what we are saying is, FTBS equals FTCS plus dissipation. Okay, so it's almost as though. It is almost as though there is a possibility that any scheme can be written as FTCS plus add on terms, okay. That is one that is one possibility. But right now we do not go that far. We basically say, oh, I can take FTCS and I can add any amount of dissipation that I want to it. I can take FTBS and add any amount of dissipation that I want to it. Is that fine? That is what it seems to say. I can take FTB, FT, I am sorry, FTCS and add any, any amount of dissipation I want to it. So you can just basically say UPQ plus 1 is UPQ plus minus, minus sigma by 2, UP plus 1, oh I have gone to superscripts, suddenly gone to superscripts, And then you can add, decide to add yourself, you can decide to add some kind of a term that looks like a mu2 times a second derivative, okay, right. Because after all, I mean anyway, see you are not solving the original equation, you are only solving the modified equation. So why not pick the modified equation that you are going to be solving? That would be the argument, why not pick the modified equation that you are going to be solving? Okay, so if you know the modified equation, you can knock out whatever terms that you want in the modified equation. That is one way to look at it. Or you know the modified equation, it has some structure that you do not like. You can specifically modify that structure to something that you like, fine, okay. Now you can ask the question, is it possible for me to take FTCS and just eliminate the dissipation? Is it possible for me to take FTCS and eliminate a term? Is it possible for me to take, I should restate that properly. Is it possible for me to take the modified equation of FTCS and do something to FTCS so that one term disappears, the second derivative term disappears, the third derivative term disappears, okay. In order to do that, if you want to do it sequentially, that is you want to eliminate the second derivative term, in order you want to eliminate the third derivative term that term that you use, the term that you add here in order to eliminate a specific component of the modified equation, just so that you understand what I am saying, do u do t, so it is not in the air, I am not saying this term, that term and so on, equals and there is a do squared u do x squared, do cubed u do x cubed do to the fourth u, do x to the fourth and so on. Let us say, let us say we just decide that we want to get rid of this term, right. You want to get rid of this term or you want to get rid of these three terms, okay. But you are going to do it starting at the second derivative, you are going to eliminate terms from the 
modified equation. Do you understand what I mean? That means I have to add something to FTCS so that these terms disappear. Okay, this is something that I want you to think about now. To determine what is the term that needs to be added, you have to use the modified equation derived from the original equation. You have to use the modified equation derived from using the original equation in eliminating the time derivatives and not the modified equation derived from the using the modified equation. Do you understand what I mean when I say modified equation derived using the modified equation? The modified equation has time derivatives and spatial derivatives. We eliminate the time derivatives using the modified equation. We eliminate the time derivatives using the original equation. If you want to eliminate any term in this you should use the equation. I am not going to give you an answer here. You think about it. You have to use the modified equation that comes from this and not the modified equation that comes from that. Okay. You may need you just you ponder on it and you will see why, why, why it is that I told you to derive the modified equation using this term. So, you can actually systematically add terms here to answer the question what term shall I add here in order to eliminate this. You should derive the modified equation using the original equation right to eliminate the time derivative terms. Is that clear? Okay. You have to go back in order of that statement may be a little confusing. You will have to go back look at the how we derived the modified equation and you will understand what I mean. Fine. Okay. So, it is possible for us to eliminate it. It is possible for us to actually add it. If you were to deliberately add, if you were to deliberately add a second derivative term right if you were to deliberately add a second derivative term it is referred to as artificial viscosity the navier stokes equations has a second derivative term which is viscosity this looks like that so this is called artificial viscosity the term that shows up in your modified equation naturally because you just did a discretization is called numerical viscosity Okay. So, this comes from your discretization, you have discretized it. So, you end up with a term, a second derivative term which is not there in the original equation. right? So, it looks like your equation has become viscous when it is actually not viscous. So, that is numerical viscosity. Okay. The term that you add deliberately because you want to fiddle with the modified equation that is called artificial viscosity. Fine. Okay. Right. Then we say we have said now see I just casually made a statement you can add any any kind any amount of artificial viscosity that you want right is that true what is the consequence of that what is the consequence of adding any amount of artificial viscosity that you want What is the consequence of adding any amount? So, if you add a large amount of artificial viscosity, what happens? Say your propagation speed is 1, say your propagation speed is 1, right? Say your propagation speed is 1, 1 meter per second if you want units 1 meter per second. And since I have said that your artificial viscosity can be anything, I add mu 2 10 power 6. Is there a concern? Should we be concerned? See now you have really totally changed the equation, right? You are no longer solving, you are really no longer solving the linear wave equation. You are solving something that looks more closer to a heat equation. A is so small, this is almost like dou u dou t equals u2 dou squared u dou x squared. Of course, we do not normally say mu 2 there we use the term kappa right for thermal conductivity thermal diffusivity actually but anyway right I will, I will use the term conductivity thermal diffusivity right. So, it would essentially degenerate to this equation 
what is the stability condition associated with this equation? If you were to apply FTCS to this, apply to heat equation. FTC has applied to heat equation, somewhat of a rapid fire quiz here. So UPQ plus 1 is UPQ plus kappa delta T by delta X squared. I am not really doing this from memory, I sort of working it out in my head. You can all you can work it out in your head, right? UP plus 1Q minus 2 up q plus up minus 1 q is that fine we have a term here that looks similar to what we had earlier like sigma we call this lambda So we will substitute our exponential, we will go through that same process. So u p plus 1 q is e power i theta u p q where theta was n delta x or n delta x by L n delta 2 pi n delta x whichever however we define our interval. See I have not even bothered. Now that now it that the fact that it is a local analysis is very clear I am not even saying how large my domain is I am not even bothered it just shows up as theta and the theta will appropriately vary okay the theta will appropriately vary. So and so this basically becomes upq plus 1 is upq minus lambda times e power i theta minus 2 plus e power minus i theta upq and therefore from our earlier stability analysis g did I make a mistake somewhere plus lambda plus lambda still stuck with wave equation plus lambda right therefore g which is upq plus 1 divided by upq the gain across one time step the amplification across one time step is 1 plus what do I get e power i theta plus e power minus i theta 2 cos theta. So that gives me a 2 lambda into cosine theta minus 1 mm. what? and I want mod g to be less than 1 mod g less than 1 what does that tell me this is real this is real right this is real mod g less than 1 tells me minus 1 less than g less than 1 fine or minus 1 less than 1 plus 2 lambda cos theta minus 1 less than 1 which way do we want to do this we have to take two equal two one, take an inequality at a time and see what happens you want to look at this one okay so if I look at that one that tells me 2 lambda into cos theta minus 1 less than 0 or lambda should be greater than 0 what is the other condition give me minus 1 less than 1 plus 2 lambda cos theta minus 1 you can do this I mean there are different ways by which we can do this or minus 1 less than lambda cos theta minus 1 
is that right? I took this minus 1 over there minus 2 divided through by 2, I skipped a step, okay, fine. Then lambdas what so what does it what does it tell us about the cos theta minus 1 what can happen? What is the constraint that this gives me? Lambda is less than half. So you get lambda is less than half. We can come back to this 0 less than lambda less than 1 half is the constraint that we get. We will come back to this. We are going to I will, I will do this in a with a two in a 2D context. We will come back to this. Okay, it is fine. Right. So I will see you in the next class. Then.